What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to create recursive calculations in Power BI with Python. This is amazing because you can't do this in DAX, either in calculate columns or measures. You can technically perform recursive calculations in Power Query, but it is extremely difficult, but it's very easy to do with a single Python script. So we're gonna walk through two examples. The first is how to set up the Fibonacci sequence. This is a good intro into recursive calculations, but then we're gonna dive into the second example, which is a more advanced solution, which will make more sense from a business perspective. So before we dive into this trick, I wanna let you know that I'm giving away a free month of training over on the BI Elite training website. That's at training.bielite.com. So anyone who's suffering from this COVID-19 pandemic, make sure you check out the BI Elite training website. You can get a free month of training over there. Just view any of the available courses and sign up for a monthly plan. Hopefully you can benefit from some free training in these really tough times, so go check that out. So let's hop on over to Excel again. So let's go to sheet one. So the Fibonacci sequence is basically just a calculation that builds on the previous rows calculation. So you start with zero, and then the second row is one. Those are hard coded in. And then the third row, it is the sum of the previous two rows. So zero and one equals one, one plus one equals two, one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, and so on. So you can see that the calculation for the current row is extremely dependent on the previous two rows calculations, and each previous rows calculation is dependent on the previous two rows calculations. So you can see why it's recursive. So to do this in Python, let's go ahead and hop on over to Power BI. In Power Query, I have my Fibonacci query, so I just have my Fibonacci column. This is connecting directly to that Excel file, and I actually need to X out of this. So, in order to set up this Fibonacci sequence in Python, it's very easy to do. So, I'm going to open up my Python script step here. And just to let you know, in order to do this, all I had to do was from this step, go to transform, run Python script. It'll open up this editor here. So I went ahead and typed in some Python code already. And just to let you know, if you don't have Python set up already, make sure you check out my previous video, Running Python Scripts in Power BI. It's gonna show you how to set up Python on your machine, set up Power BI to detect your Python installation. It's also gonna show you how to install the necessary packages to run a couple of functions here in Python. For example, this script or all Python scripts in Power BI require the use of the pandas package. So you're going to need to install that and set that up, but I will show you how to do that in my other video. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the first line of code says dataset.loc and then brackets zero Fibonacci Python equals zero. What this is saying is basically for our data set, which your table that's passed into the script is always called data set. For your data set at location zero, the zero index, so the first row, and then we're creating a new column called Fibonacci Python. We're setting it equal to zero. Dataset.loc in the first index, so that second row, with our new column Fibonacci Python equals one. So we're just hard coding those values in. I'm gonna get rid of this for now. Let's click OK and come down to our last step here. Just as an example, um, when your Python script finishes, you are able to select the table that you want to open. We're opening that and I'm just changing a type here. So this is our result of our Python calculation. We see that our first row is zero, our second row is one, everything else is null because we have just hard coded in the zero index, the first index as zero and one. So let's come over to our Python script one more time. Let's paste in what I got rid of previously. So this is a basic for loop. So we're saying for i in range two to the length of the data set. So we're setting our iteration variable i uh, from two to the last value of our data set. So basically the length of our data set is gonna provide us the, basically the length of the data set. So we wanna iterate from two until we reach the end of our table. And then uh, for each row, we want to set dataset.loc i in our column Fibonacci Python equal to dataset.loc i minus one Fibonacci Python plus dataset.loc i minus two Fibonacci Python. So imagine we're on the second index. So this is our third row of our table. So dataset.loc i, so this is a two, so two Fibonacci Python 
equals dataset.loc1 Fibonacci Python plus dataset.loc0 Fibonacci Python. So you can see how it's recursive because it's referring to the previous row and the previous previous rows calculation. So if you click OK, we can see how this works out just to test that we have the proper Fibonacci sequence calculated. So once that calculates, we'll click change type one and we see our new Fibonacci Python column, zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight. It mirrors perfectly with the Fibonacci sequence. So you're able to do this really easily in Excel, not so easily in Power BI, but we are able to calculate it very easily with a Python script. So with that, that's kind of our example into recursion. Let's go into another example of a little bit more advanced recursion. And I'm actually gonna hop on over and open up my Excel file again to show you how I'm calculating this easily in Excel. So if we come over to sheet two, so this is just a calculation that takes a performance column and we're creating a new advanced calc column. So basically the first row is just our performance squared. The second row is the previous calculation plus our performance squared. The next row is the previous calculation plus our performance squared. So it builds on itself and you can't do this in DAX because there's no sense of what was our previous rows calculation let me add something to that so we just need to be able to just kind of take the result and then add our current rows performance and square it so let's hop on over to power bi again so we see we've already set up our advanced calc python it looks exactly like our advanced calc and the code is very very similar so we only need to set our first row so our zero index we're creating that new advanced calc python column we're setting it equal to dataset.log0 of the performance column to the power of two. So the asterisk asterisk operator is the to the power of operator. And then we're doing a very similar for loop. So for i in range one to length of the data set. And notice we're starting from one instead of two here because we're only hard coding in that first value. And then we're setting dataset.log i advanced calc python equals dataset.loc i minus one advanced calc python plus dataset.loc i performance to the power of two. So you can see that we're referring directly to our previous advanced calc python calculation, the row before the current row that we're on right now. And then we're raising to the power of two the performance column of our current row. So let's click OK and check that out. Oh, I have it open. Let me go ahead and exit out. And I'm gonna refresh my preview. Give that just a second to calculate, there we go. So you see that our first row is just our performance squared. Our second row is our previous rows advanced calculation plus our performance squared and so on. And really the key here is that we are able to get the exact same calculation as our Excel calculation because although this is extremely easy to do in Excel, it is not easy to do in Power BI and you're not always gonna connect to a, an Excel data source. For example, if I were to connect to a web source and I'm getting data from a web page, we're not able to create that recursion in Excel, so we have to find a way to do it in Power BI. And that's why Python is so important in this uh, kind of method here. So that's pretty much the entire calculation. If you like this and wanna see it in blog form, I've also published a blog on this topic. So that's over at the bielite.com slash blog. The link will be down in the description. And one more time, if you are in need of Power BI training, make sure you check out training.bielite.com. Take advantage of your free month of training and I will see you in the next video.